ladies and gentlemen, programmers, boys and girls, people from everywhere around the world. It is Monday, the 29th of February, 2016. This is The Daily Code, and I am Chris. Uh, and here, we just generally mess around with programming code and do some awesome stuff. Um, I hope you had a good weekend. I had a good weekend. And I thought it would be fun today to work on some ORM code, because I've been interested in a little while, for a little while, in uh, trying to create a newer, more modern version of some of the APIs that I work with in Silverstripe every day. Um, and the way that I thought to do this was to uh, not so much change the APIs, allow the APIs to remain pretty much the same as they were, but um, build them on top of really solid libraries underneath. So this is the goal. Um, in this project. And maybe it would be good if I just spoke a little bit about what this uh, what this code base is looking like at the moment. Um, for a start, I have quite a few things in here. Um, all of these things do sort of interesting stuff, except I guess for extension trait, which does nothing. Um, and the classes we're going to work on are these data object ones. Now, Silverstripe has an interesting object model. Uh, it's a PHP framework in CMS and um, Essentially, most of the stuff that you will work with as a developer on Silverstripe comes down to a data object. Um, so the pages in the site get saved to the database. They are very similar to data objects. Um, and the general data entities that you would have in a normal site for things like products or uh, representations of uploads or representations of music tracks or blog posts or things like that are data objects. You define their uh, database keys like this. In fact, I have another example here where I've created a page and I've defined two things, two columns on it. So I'm saying, okay, I have this data object. I want this persisted in the database somewhere. And the fields that I want in it are title, which is a string field, and content, which is a text field. Now, here's the first difference. Silverstripe maps these two very uh, different names. Um, I'm looking to try and implement the data types that you can find in things like Finks or Laravel or Doctrine, uh, these abstracted data types. But I haven't really gotten very far with all this, as I'll show you just now. Also, something which Silverstripe doesn't allow is overriding the table name. It infers the table name from the class and the namespace. Uh, so this is something new, which isn't necessarily supported in Silverstripe, at least not with any modules or extensions I've seen, but it's something really cool that I've come to appreciate from things like Laravel. So what else is there here? Well, um, I've created a few interfaces in addition to the database stuff that I want to do um, for things that are common paradigms in Silverstripe. So, one thing that's very, very popular in Silverstripe is being able to define extensions. Uh, these are things that can, for instance, add columns to a database table and extra accesses and mutators and transformer methods. Um, there are things like controller extensions, which you can apply as a sort of middleware or just general plugin to the Silverstripe application as it boots and as it does interesting things. Now, the first interface that I made for that was this extensible one. So, um, let me try and remember what I did here because it's been a while. Hold on, I'll just expand this. Okay, so the idea with this is that um, classes that implement this extensible interface with a corresponding extensible trait, which I'll open up, should allow a few things. They should allow the addition of extensions just by specifying the class type. They should allow the removal of those extensions, and this all at runtime, obviously, after the system's already booted. They should provide a list of extensions that are applied to them. And they should have a publicly accessible method which will, uh, which they can fire in their normal functions as they're doing the normal stuff. But these should go, these should trigger a cascade of method calls on the extensions that are applied. So how does this actually look? I've written some tests for this as well, uh, which is pretty cool. So 
A basic extension looks like this. I have some fixture classes. It's not really interesting to know what they do, but uh, extensible is the object, like the controller or the data object that's being extended. And extension are just two dynamic extensions. In fact, I will go and have a look at them just to show you exactly what's going on there. So extensible looks like this. It has a run function and it calls the uh, on run method of every extension on it and it returns those results. It gives an initial value of five. And so what you would imagine is that this will call on run for every extension applied to this class, to an instance of this class, and each of those methods will take a starting value and return a resulting value. So the extensions just have that on run and this one multiplies the value by two and returns that and this one has an on run and it multiply, multiplies the value by three and returns it. So you'd expect with a starting value of five, multiply by two, multiply by three will give you 30. If we go to this test, we can see we create the extensible instance. Uh, we run it the first time and we see, okay, this must have a value of five because no extensions are applied yet. Add one extension, add another extension, and then this should equal 30. We also want the ability to remove extensions dynamically without a huge performance cost. And so we can do that with remove extension, and then it will only be five times two because test extension two multiplies by three. So five times two, that should be 10. And I'm not gonna run this, but take my word for it, this actually passes. Uh, then I have another simpler test here just to show that get extensions works because I was going for code coverage. So that's the one idea. This idea that we can create class instances that implement a certain interface and that we can add other class instances which implement that same interface to augment the abilities of the first class. We can create extensions. It's an extension system. It's a plugin system. Okay. And this is very, very, very widely used in Silver Stripe. It's one of the core ways in which modules are written, in which a lot of the system functions. In fact, a lot of Silver Stripe is based, uh, Silver Stripe was orig originally based off the idea of model admins from uh, Django, I think it was. And, um, and so it's got, it's very strong in terms of its ability to generate CMS forms and wire that stuff to the database well. So aside from its interesting and somewhat uh, unique to PHP data model, um, another really strong concept of it is extensions. That's how a lot of it works. We run silverstripe.org and there are an incredible number of extensions in that code base. Most of the code base is extensions, just plugging uh, into the core CMS and framework, and just uh, also augmenting modules that are included. So we load the open source blog module, for instance. And um, for that, we want to add some extra functionality. So we would add an extension to it to have a category list or a more advanced search. And so a lot of that code base is just extensions and extensions are really important to Silver Stripe. I'm waffling, I'm waffling. I don't wanna waffle. The other thing that I did uh, that I've been working with is a kind of uh, nested configuration system. So it works like this. You create a class um, that is extensible and uh, you can define in that class some config that it gets. So let's go have a look what that does. On config, we use this on config method. The get config method is in configurable trait and it basically does the iterative um, conf config resolution, if you will. Okay, so we define on config. Uh, it can take some default parameters. It returns an array of parameters. And then we can add extensions which augment this. So this one modifies the config to, uh, to say, well, it doesn't actually modify the config. It just returns an additional config. So where extensions um, that are run take an input value and use that to return an output value, a modified value, config merges it all together. You don't actually have to modify the input config of this. This other extension adds another property. Basically, uh, we have a default config that this class provides. We check that that's actually true. 
uh, which it is, we add a couple extensions and then we expect that widgets has been turned to true and that an extra parameter has been added. We test that and it works. We remove the extension, and then we can see widgets is back to false because that was the original value, but the new parameter is there. Basically, this is the config system. Now, there is one thing in this config system that I haven't done yet, which is load config from files and work out how that is cached, um, but I'm not really interested in doing that right now. What I want to do right now is I want to turn this class into a database table and I want to be able to get new instances of it and I want to be able to uh, create new instances. Uh, oh, well, okay, let me restart. I want to get this as a database table. I want to be able to create new page objects in PHP and save them and that I want to be written to the database. Now it sounds a lot easier than what it actually is and writing an ORM is an unenviable task, but I'm not actually going to write a whole ORM. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to delete some stuff first. Do, 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 do. I'm just going to delete some stuff first. I originally tried to do this on the back of Doctrine, and that didn't work, specifically because in Doctrine, you can't do this kind of field setup. You have to have a title property. You have to have a content property. Even if you don't use annotations, with Doctrine, you have to have those properties defined because it sets the values of those properties through reflection, which is uh, cool and also a pain in the butt if you don't want to define these properties. What I want to do is I want to say, okay, these are the properties I want you to create in the database table, but don't store them in actual properties on this class. Just store them on an array somewhere and use uh, get and set magic methods and return them like that. Anyway, I didn't have any luck with Doctrine, so I thought I would try Propel, which looks like this. I had this in the background just now. Now Propel, um, I know very little about it, but what I've seen so far is that it should be possible to build on top of Propel without having to define those properties. And the main, uh, the first thing I'm gonna try with that is that to configure Propel, you have to do XML. Okay, which sucks. XML sucks, generally. I'm sure you'll agree with me, just because it's very verbose and not very widely used these days anymore. Or at least written by humans. But I don't really care if it is XML because I'm not going to be writing this stuff up by hand. The idea is that I have the data objects generate the stuff. And then I run Propel to synchronize this to the database and to create the mappings that it needs to be able to connect the object instances to the database tables. But users don't actually have to see any of this junk. This just has to be created automatically. So that's what I want to do now. Um, I Before this, I was running, uh, as I mentioned, Doctrine and, um, and wasn't having much luck with it. But um, I had this class, this document object generator. Um, it accepts an analyzer, and what the analyzer does is it reflects on the fields that are defined in a recursive manner. So it will take something like this page class, and when get fields is called on it, it'll say, okay, here are some fields. Now go one level up to the next thing in the inheritance tree and get those fields and one level up to the next thing and get those fields all the way until it gets to data object. And when it gets to data object, it stops adding fields. So you can create subclasses upon subclasses upon subclasses that all define additional fields to add. And they will uh, create a composite list of fields and field types. Okay. Cool. Now it does this using reflection. The library is better reflection, uh, not just the standard reflection class. And I thought it was cool to use that because it doesn't actually need to create an instance of the object in order to get the fields. Invariably, it's a it's a um, instance property, so it's going to create an instance of that. But it doesn't have to do that here, I don't think. I don't think it has to create an instance in this uh, method. Anyway. 
that's besides the point. I'm using reflection to get the fields property and its default value, which is the list of uh, list of columns and column types. Uh, it merges that up until it gets to data object and stops. The table, um, it will check if there is a table property. If there isn't, it'll create a name that I think makes sense. It'll put everything in lowercase. It'll split on words with an underscore and it'll trim underscores on either side. So it'll do a full, it won't do a full namespace resolution. It'll just do the last thing. For instance, this won't be silvershift underscore database underscore data object underscore page. This will just be page lowercase. And if this was page object, it would be page underscore object or lowercase. That's the idea with that. So if the table property is defined, it'll use that. Otherwise, it'll do the work to create a sensible name. And that's it. That's it. So that's, a de that's the data object analyzer. That just returns the name of the class that's being analyzed, the uh, table, and the fields. Then the generator is supposed to take this and put it into a usable format. I started a bit with this earlier. Have a look at this commented stuff I have here. It's very similar to one of these definitions. And each data object is going to create a definition like this. Uh, and right at the end, I'll bundle all the data objects together with all their definitions and create just a, a final name for this and then synchronize that to the database. So I was busy with this earlier. And um, where I got to was this over here. Now, no, 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 no. I'm not sure how you define nullable fields in silver stripe. So I'm going to check that out. Silver stripe, define nullable. Dun, 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 dun. How do you define nullable? Okay. Docs.silverstripe. I'm just looking what the format is so that I can copy that format a little bit. So uh, let's see, developer guides, model and databases, data model over M, nullable, null, lots of nulls there. This actually seems to make all of them null. Hmm, this seems to make all of them nullable. Let's go with that. Let's define them all as null and not required. Let's say, okay, uh, what do we want to do here? Here we want to say column is new DOM node. What did I use as the capitalization? Okay, I just want to change this to table to make it a little bit clearer that it is the outer one. So column is DOM node, column attributes, uh, and this will be name. And this, the definition of this is actually name type. So here we'll say this is uh, name is name. Copy this and say type is type. It's fine. Uh, okay. Now, I have a special field type here. If you check in the example, uh, in fact, not in the example, if you check in the data object, which is which fields are also added to this table, I have a special type called identity. Um, so all data objects are going to have this based on how we determine what the field names are. Uh, I think we need to have a special case to handle that. So if type is identity, then we also have to change this type because then it has to be integer. Uh, also, I notice these types are integer, varchar. I may actually rename these. I may actually rename these. Um, 
Okay, for now I'll just use the default types that are there, which means I need to go uh, and change these to varchar and text. Okay, so type integer, uh, primary key true, auto increments true. Yes, it came. If type is varchar, oh, come on. Then we need to set a size and I'll just set this to the maximum every time because right now I'm not really interested in making that smaller. Okay, that seems reasonable. So we add some DOM nodes there. Oh, one more thing we have to add this. So we have to say something like table append child. I missed the autocomplete from PHP storm. Append child column and then return table to string. I'm going to go to the docs quickly. Okay, php.net function dom node. Mm, I actually want dom document. I'll go dom node. Dom, dom, actually it is dom node. It is dom node. Methods. Let's see, is there a two string method? Mm. Mm. Let's just cast this to a string. A uh, string. Let's just cast this to a string and see what it gives us. Also, we want to return. Oh, we want to return a string from this. And here we can say something like, wow, this is actually a lot more difficult to do this stupid boilerplate without PHP Storm. Okay, returns a table node. Yeah, could do better. Could do better. Anyway, let's see what this generates. I want to create a new index file. So we'll do that. We'll say page is new page. No, that's not true. We'll say analyzer is new solvershow database. Analyzer, we give this a class of page because that's the class that it's going to inspect. And then we say generator. Oh, this nonsense yeah okay first off let's print this to see that there to see what is here I think it'll work but let's see what it does anyway nothing hmm that's interesting Oh, you know what? Maybe what we have to do is composer update. Now, the way that I've defined this in this demo project is as a path dependency, path repository. So every time I do uh, updates to the dependencies of the main repo, I need to do a composer update here so it can copy all those dependencies in or remove them, as in the case of Doctrine. And uh, while we wait for that to happen, I'm just actually going to take a quick break. So hang around and enjoy some music and I'll see you in two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> 